Prosecutors tonight say they ensured federal lawmakers follow the law. A jury in Los Angeles convicts Nebraska Republican U.S. Congressman Jeff Fortenberry on all three felony charges. Good evening, I'm Rob McCartney. I'm Julie Cornell. The jury finds Fortenberry guilty of scheming to falsify and conceal material facts and two counts of making false statements to federal investigators. The three felony charges each carry a maximum penalty of five years in federal prison. KETV News Watch 7's David Earl has covered this trial since it began last week. He's live with us outside the federal courthouse in downtown Los Angeles. David? Yeah, Rob, Julia, California jury says Congressman Fortenberry is guilty after they heard the recorded phone call between him and a fundraiser host here in Los Angeles and watching and listening to two recorded interviews where the feds say Congressman Fortenberry lied when they asked him if he knew about foreign money in his campaign. Well, hearing that verdict after just two hours of deliberation was devastating for the Fortenberry family. His daughters crying in court, his wife, who actually took the stand and here earlier today in his defense, emotional as well. Congressman spoke with us just a few moments ago. And you'll hear my phone continuing to go off all through this. I'm getting so many beautiful messages from people literally all around the world who've been praying for us and pulling for us. Um, I want to thank my beautiful wife, Celeste, for the extraordinary, extraordinary gift of loving me and our marriage. And she went up there today with such courage and dignity. I, I couldn't have been prouder. She's, she's my heroine. Um, we always felt like it was going to be hard to have a fair process here. So this appeal starts immediately. Okay. Congressman, do you regret coming out here and taking the money? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Do, do you wish you had not come out here to do the fundraiser? I mean, you, you heard six days of testimony. It's all out in the open. And so um, we made our case. And again, we always had concerns about the fairness of process. You, how about the campaign? We're going to spend some time as a family. And um, that's what we're doing right now. Thank you. Thank you. So the United States Attorney's Office out here presented a meticulous case run by the office's Public Corruption Unit, which was investigating foreign influence and cash from Lebanese Nigerian billionaire Gilbert Shiguri and his associates. Jury heard phone calls again and interviews, and prosecutors said they were grateful that they returned a guilty verdict. Uh, we're, it's great when you have significant recorded evidence in this case, and our view is that it was a, a simple story. Um, the politician caught up in the cycle of uh, money and power, and uh, like I said, he, he lost his way, and I think that was pretty clear from the evidence. Have you ever had a verdict returned this quickly before? Um, it was a fast verdict. Um, we think the jury was clearly paying attention. We saw them taking a lot of notes. Um, they did have the opportunity uh, while we were uh, right after to deliberate, and they seem they wanted to take that opportunity, and we think they worked very hard and ultimately saw it as a simple story with compelling evidence. Ultimately, uh, the defense argument that he was entitled to separate treatment or different treatment than any other person under investigation uh, was not a defense that the jury found compelling. Um, and I think, as I mentioned, it was certainly very vindicating to see the hard work of the federal agents and the U.S. Attorney's Office um, roundly supported by the jury's verdict in prompt fashion and all counts. What do you have to say to other, the system itself, do you think? Uh, well, hopefully that uh, lawmakers should follow the law. Um, we hold them to a high standard, um, but they are critical. If we want to expect anyone to follow the law, Ultimately, it starts with the lawmakers, and I think that's even more paramount when the investigation itself goes to election integrity, um, which lawmakers also should hold clear and true to their, their heart and their jobs. And I think um, hopefully lawmakers will see that the federal government takes it very seriously to hold them to do that job. And when it comes to foreign influence, comes to Federal Election Campaign Act violations, those are things that are paramount, um, certainly today.
Assistant United States Attorney Mac Jenkins there uh, answering questions from reporters after the guilty verdict came in. Now, the defense argument here was that uh, Congressman Fortenberry didn't hear the phone call clearly between the L.A. host and him, where the L.A. host told him that foreign money entered his campaign. The defense argument also centered around uh, Congressman Fortenberry's memory, that he just didn't remember that phone call uh, when asked about it by federal agents. Jury, uh, after two hours of deliberation, tossed uh, those arguments from the defense aside. Uh, Congressman Fortenberry's sentencing is set uh, for June 28th back here in California at the federal courthouse. He is out uh, on his own recognizance. A judge does not find him to be a flight risk ahead of that sentence date. We're live in downtown Los Angeles tonight. I'm David Earle, KETV Newswatch 7. David, thank you. Well, Fortenberry's chief rival in the Nebraska Republican primary is Norfolk State Senator Mike Fly. Now in January, Governor Pete Ricketts and former Governor Dave Heineman endorsed Flood over Fortenberry because of Fortenberry's legal issues. We've reached out to Flood. He's declined to comment on Fortenberry's conviction tonight. Well, the leading Democrat in the District 1 race is Lincoln State Senator Patty Panzing Brooks. On Twitter tonight, she thanked the jury for doing its work. She offered her thoughts and prayers to Congressman Fortenberry and his family and said now is the time for Nebraska to elect new leadership, promising to serve with integrity and fight for all Nebraskans if elected. Well, some local leaders are reacting to the verdict tonight. Nebraska Democratic Party Chair Jane Klebb says on Twitter, quote, the Republican Party with their one party grip on our state continues to show they are corrupt and shameless. Fortenberry's lies violated the trust of Nebraskans and the law. Now, at this point, it's unclear if Fortenberry will step down from his seat in Congress. There's no indication if he'll continue his reelection campaign. His attorneys had one last chance today to prove reasonable doubt. They told the jury that the congressman did not understand the 2018 phone call when he was told about a foreign campaign contribution. And the defense says that investigators set Fortenberry up planting and hoarding information and conducting a flawed memory test. Fortenberry's wife Celeste took the stand to defend her husband today. Again, she testified that cell phone service is spotty at their home, that her husband hates fundraising calls and does other things to distract himself during them. Again, the congressman could get a maximum of five years in prison on each count, 15 years in all. Sentencing is set for June 28th in Los Angeles.